Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the third installment in this video series comparing uh, two different styles of racks uh, for fish tanks. Uh, these are the two main ones that I have in my fish room. And if you remember from the first two videos in this series, uh, this one has come ahead quite a bit when it comes to uh, ease of water changes and also for ease of filter cleaning. So I thought I'd do this third one. This may be the last one for a little while, at least until I uh, build the second row of tanks in the other rack, and then I may come back to it and revisit this. But what I wanted to do is cover uh, reasons <laughs> for why you would bother building the other style. Because, like I said, if, if all your concerns were just for, uh, like I said, ease of water changes and filter cleaning, uh, this one's uh, hands down the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a few uh, clips of uh, some of the tanks in this row. And uh, while I do that, I'm going to try and explain uh, some of the faults with this. Uh, these are some Severums I have, and they like soft acid water. Uh, they come from the Amazon area. And I also have African cichlids in this system. And then the problem is with that is they like completely different ty types of water. Now, I get away with kind of using a mid-range, and because these fish uh, have been captive bred for quite a while, uh, they can tolerate it, so it's not such a big deal, and they're reasonably happy. But if I wanted to breed these fish, like I've had, I have tried in uh, one of the other tanks, uh, they don't do as well that way. And these are also, uh, well, not South American, these are Central American cichlids, convicts. Now these guys, as you can tell by the color pattern, are not anywhere near the wild type, and uh, they'll breed an enemy, so it's not such a big deal. But like I said, if you want to have uh, different chemistries in your tanks, uh, this rack does not do that. You have one chemistry. And if you don't want to heat individual tanks, you have uh, one temperature as well. That brings me to other aspects of how the problems of having a uh, common water uh, from tank to tank. Uh, besides just not being able to uh, alter chemistry between one tank and another, uh, let's say you wanted to quarantine a fish that you bought. You have to shut off one of these tanks from the system. And then when you do that, you have to have a sponge filter running, so you're being running extra filters. Uh, that can cause issues. Uh, in my case, what I do is I have, uh, this is not just the only rack, this is the one that shows up mostly in the videos, but I have other ones that I have different sumps for and I use those for quarantining. Now, when you have uh, fish like this, like uh, originally I had kept guppies in here, and guppy babies just, they end up everywhere in all the different tanks, so if you're trying to keep um, uh, separate strains, uh, different varieties, you end up uh, not being able to do that because they'll end up interbreeding and mixing. And also, one time a while back, I bought some cherry shrimp. I put them in one of the tanks, and then they ended up everywhere. And also snails, and uh, my favorite plant of all time, uh, duckweed. I have not been able to get it out of this system. There's just no way that I can. It just ends up in the filter, stuck somewhere, and then it gets uh, knocked loose, and it ends up going through... Uh, the plumbing and ends up everywhere. So those are big issues sometimes if you're trying to like line breed something where you're you're trying to keep things from intermixing. So, and one aspect of chemistry that I guess I should mention that's in, in favor of this system, this system is very stable because it's 400 plus gallons of water uh, you don't get much in the way of variation in chemistry. And if I overfeed a particular tank, that tank uh, won't end up being polluted because it's all shared. So, I mean, there are pluses to having uh, all your water uh, commingling like this. But this rack here has this distinct advantage that each of these tanks could have their own uh, chemistry. Uh, you can completely alter whatever you like. You just have to pre-mix the water before you put it into the, any of the tanks just so that you don't end up with uh, any kind of shock to the system. I'm not bothering to do that right now. The main reason why I have this rack from uh, my personal point of view 
besides just you know running some experiments and stuff, is I want to uh, breed s different varieties of fish, like guppies or endlers or whatever, and not have them end up in them. <laughs> have them end up everywhere and end up with just a, a, a mishmash of, uh, of a gene pool. Now, from a stability point of view, these tanks are a lot smaller, uh, and their filtration systems, I mean, they're good filters, but every time you clean one, you can have spikes, so it is not as stable. But as I said earlier, I mean, this has some serious advantages, uh, especially for quarantining. Quarantining, uh, each tank is has completely separate water, you don't have to worry about uh, one tank uh, end up uh, contaminating another tank unless you, <laughs> you're you using the same dip net everywhere or that sort of stuff. But it's easier to manage that sort of thing in uh, this style of system. Now, besides spread of disease and spread of organisms, <laughs> I have no duckweed in this. Every now and then I'll see a teeny little piece. Uh, I think I've mentioned that in one or two videos. All I have to do is just pull it out. It's gone. I don't have to worry about it popping up again. And I said the other system, I will never ever get rid of all that duckweed. <laughs> so that pretty much covers the differences I wanted to point out between uh, these two rock styles. I'm sure I've missed a few things. I did write down a few notes for this particular one because I wanted to, there was a bunch of stuff I wanted to cover. Uh, but there still may be stuff that uh, you may think of. If you do, please uh, leave a comment below. And in future videos, I will definitely try and get around to those things as well. But I think I've covered the essentials at least. Uh, and <laughs> hopefully this video has shown that uh, this rock style has some advantages. And uh, if you decide, uh, or actually you're trying to decide between, or let's say you're going to build a fish rack for a fish room, and you have some particular questions or whatever, uh, definitely feel free to let me know what those are as well. So anyway, if you uh, like this style of video, please like and or subscribe, and I will uh, definitely uh, appreciate any comments you have. So anyway, uh, next week I'm going to go on to different things. I've been actually getting a bunch of uh, viewer requests for uh, some stuff, so that may creep into the regular Friday stuff too, depending upon how that continues. Uh, but I will definitely have a video up for that uh, next Wednesday. And then next Friday's will be <laughs> depending upon how things go. So anyway, thanks uh, for watching, and I will see you in the next video, and uh, bye for now.